Here's looking at you then. Well, you better look at this. This is extraordinary. It's one of my typological toys. And it's called a jitterbug. I think it was designed by Buckminster Fuller. He certainly was helped to promote it. There's something extraordinary because when you get the two triangles at opposite ends and push them together like that, the thing collapses, forms a, an eight-sided figure, which is called an octahedron. But the two halves go first one way and then the other way. If I make it go, and it's called, it's, it's an action which they say was similar to a dance in the 1930s, it's called the jitterbug. This way, that way, this way, that way, and the swinging of the hips. And then it flattens like that, very satisfactory, and the points come up to a centre up there, and that makes a nice big square pyramid. So lots and lots of shapes. And the fun of this is actually constructing it yourself, putting all the pieces together with a diagram to show how it's done. So I've been enjoying that for a long time, but there's something I came across a few years later which I couldn't believe, and that is that this extraordinary bunch of rings is exactly the same as this. It's a, it's a jitterbug, although it's called a ring jitterbug. I found it in the Aha Gallery in Zurich, but I then met the inventor a couple of years later, who lives in Bethlehem, Maine. Buckminster Fuller used to employ this chap, Dennis Drahan, as a, an apprentice. Look what you do to open it up. This is what he taught and showed me when he was actually, he invited me to spend the night there with he and his wife. And in his living room, he had in the one corner a little, well, a little spot welder for, the, for all the wire joints. So you've got these opposite pieces, which are rings, and then when you push them like that, that centre bit does exactly the same as the other one. It jitters this way, jitters that way, back and forth, just like the jitter dance in the 1930s. And then he had to show me how to deconstruct it, how to flatten it, which is very interesting. I've never forgotten it. You just make a little cat's cradle, put your finger there, and put a finger in there, and put a finger in there, oops, and a finger in there, and that's halfway. And that's a big bunch, but you wouldn't believe that it's going to flatten, but it does. Finger in there, finger in there, finger in there, and a finger in there. And I bunch them together like that. Fold it like sheets, fold it like sheets, and it's away. Wonderful. So both those are the same topological shape, basically, of a, of a, of a jitterbug. A rod jitterbug and a, and a ring jitterbug. Wonderful stuff. So, fairly easy stuff compared with some of this, which is from a, a German geometrist, and some of the stuff he's made is extraordinary. This one, I've got a feeling, well, it looks like a crown for me, for my head, but I think it should open up in some other way, and I think I've pulled it too far, so it's a bit, crumped, a bit scrunched up now, so I've got to work out or perhaps meet the guy sometime in Germany and find out how it opens up. But here's two other ones of his which show the sort of things he makes from wire and little joints. This one is a very beautiful one. I think it's got a lovely shape to it. Opens up like that, turns upside down, turns it in, makes a sort of um, cylindrical shape like that, which is very nice. But I love the way the centre squeezes together like that. And then you get those two nice sort of tear lobes at the top and bottom. And then the bottom one can be opened up like that. So it makes a, a lotus flower. Very, very beautiful stuff, isn't it? And here's his more extravagant one. He called this double ananas, double pineapple. Extraordinary. And it bounces as well, too extraordinary. But again, the centre will open up like that and it pulls out and makes other shapes. So both these are really quite complicated. You can't go too far with them. There's a little retaining bar on this one that to prevent you from opening it too far, I think, which is probably a good thing because I would be tempted to. And they're both very, very extravagant bits of geometry. Superb stuff. I had to go myself a, a little bit of adaptation, which is the old mandala, which was invented sometime about a thousand years ago from India. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it consists of just that. That's the, that's the mandala shape. But what I did was to get a second one and join it. There's little red joins there are my, my own work and put another mandala in the bottom. So if we get this to open, behave itself, that's right. We've now got a cylinder and then we can shape push that shape together and we can push that shape together and get a sort of um, like a wheel almost and then we can push that bit out and it'll flatten again with little bulbs or flattening completely. A double mandala, never, never been made before I suppose but you can make your own because you can buy these quite inexpensively nowadays just put two together or three or four or more. Wow what a thought. And the last two items are something that Rick Flowerday showed me about a lovely American who I knew way, way back in the 1990s showed me, which is a construction which has got two rods going up, two rods going sideways, and two rods going towards you. So it's a lovely sort of um, three-dimensional object. What's interesting is when you put it on one of the flat triangles, it leaps up in the air. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing. So packed up flat, 
And then a few years afterwards, I came across the same thing, but made a, from, a, from another artist, and with much, much larger rods, but it's basically the same thing. It's got two rods going up, two rods going out, two rods going sideways, and then springs holding them all in tension. And then when you put this down, that will leap up as well. So, goodness me, I'm trying to keep my pet under control, but I keep springing up. Woo! Oh, you've got to spring up. Poof! It's a hard work.